Oh, he mel Oh, yes, that's a good bite. He come all the way out of the water to get it. That is so much fun. I love topwater fishing. Oh, my goodness. He is pulling hard. I don't know if I've got him hooked funny or what. Hey, guys, welcome back to Project E. Man, this week, I'm trying something really hard. I'm trying to catch fish in the end of summer. It's one of the hardest times of the year for me through my career to catch them. And uh, oh, he just got one hook in him. That's what the problem is. And I struggle with it. I, I really do. It, there's just, but over the last 20 years, I have found a few things that, that help me, you know, that help me. Look at that big old fish. Golly, that's a big one. That's a big one. That is a big one. I can't even think about what I was trying to say. Come here, open that mouth. Open, open that mouth, just let me have you. Oh, oh, oh. Looky there, golly. <laughs> that's a good one. Oh man. Anyway, I was trying to say, I gotta talk about this fish. Look how short and fat it is. I mean, that thing's like huge. What a cool fish. His eyeballs are all bugged out. Sucker's old. Look at that fish. I just can't even know how fat it is. Oh, thank you, buddy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Golly. So anyway, what I was trying to say, I'm gonna try to go through a couple of scenarios that I use to combat the end of summer. And one of them, we just started it right there in a grand way, is throwing a topwater shallow. I know that doesn't sound like, oh wow, but shallow. When I say shallow, I mean really shallow. We're gonna fish super shallow, and you don't think of doing that. It's the end of August. Last week of August that we're out here, and we're gonna be fishing today that deep. That fish right there came out of water that deep. And uh, that's just one thing that I look for when fishing gets really tough at the end of the year. And I'll give you some reasons why here coming up of why I think they're up there. Let's catch another one. One thing you got to do in August, you got to get out here early in the morning. You just have to. I mean, it's just one of those things to help your numbers, to help your day, to help my confidence. Man, try to get out here before that sun comes up. It, uh, it just makes things a lot, lot easier. You'll just get a few bites, get your confidence going. So that's one thing that I do is get out here early. He ate that jaywalker. It's a fat, chunky one. He's wide. Got him. Got him. That's another nice one. Oh my goodness, that was a big one. Golly, that was a big one. Oh gosh. Dang it. I mean, it's not, it's not eight inches deep up there. He had nowhere to go but up. God, man. Just an example of how shallow it really is up there when you see those waves. This is the stuff that I'm talking about. Really, really flat gravel points, rock points that are just super flat. I don't know why, but that's where they get at the end of the summer. You know, there's all kinds of life out here. You know, I, I just saw a big carp, you know, wake away from my bait. There's catfish jumping, there's sand bass jumping, but there's also bass. But in my mind, I can tell the bass from all the others because, oh, <laughs> hold on a second, I gotta catch this. Golly, he was knocking it out of the water like crazy. Come here, buddy, come here, buddy. He hit it twice, knocked it a foot out of the water both times. Stay right there, just stay right there and I'm gonna bring you in here. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. He's got it choked, look at that. Golly, that's a good one. He ate that, golly, fish landing violation. Hold still, man, come on, bud. And that was a fun bite. 
He hit that thing, I promise you, like a foot out of there. You're like, pow, pow. <laughs> Got it good. What a pretty bass. Thanks, bud. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Sweet. So I was trying to say, you know, a lot of people will throw at every little circle they see out here. I tend to only, you know, just doing it for a long time. I don't want to sound like I know a lot. I know a little bit, but you can just tell the difference in the sound of, of when a bass is feeding versus a gar or a catfish or, or, you know, something else. And also, you know, it needs to happen on the point. There's so much stuff out here happening over seven, eight feet of water. Uh, I'm not gonna catch those fish anyway if they were bass, so. If one happens up there in that little zone where it's about a foot deep, yeah, you bet your bottom dollar I'm gonna be throwing on it. And that is the hardest thing to do in bass fishing, you know. That fish blew up on that thing twice, threw it way out of the water, and I'm proud of myself. I didn't jerk the, the, the bait away from it. It's like, it's like standing in the batter's box and Nolan Ryan is throwing a couple hundred mile an hour pitches then he brings that 80 mile an hour curveball and it starts way up at your head and it ends up in the strike zone you just you can't you gotta you want to duck and dodge and, and fall to your knees uh kind of like that bass you know i want to jerk bad when i see that bait getting knocked out of the water and blowed up all over but you can't do it you've gotta you gotta wait till you know they've got it one thing about fish when they're this shallow I think they're spooky. You know, I'm trying to stay as far off these fish as I can. I'm still out here in, in seven to eight feet of water, but yet where I'm throwing, I mean, it's shallow. I'll go up there and I'll show you here in a second. Uh, shallow, shallow. And I, I think it's just important to be quiet, to stay as far off of them as you can. You know, birds flying over, you'll see them all scatter. You know, you see these geese flying over. You know, they may get used to some of that, but I guarantee you they know when it's always happening. Try to be quiet, I guess that's what I'm saying. Try to uh, be stealthy. Oh, oh, that was a giant. Oh, I got that one. Gosh, dang it, those are some big ones up there. I mean, big ones. I didn't get one of the big ones, but I got one of them. Oh, man, that is so much fun. Golly, that's fun. I'd catch like five to one if I could just catch them all on a topwater. Go, Lee. <laughs> I just ducked that Nolan Ryan curveball. I fell to my knees because I jerked hard right there. Oh, I thought he had it. Golly, who wouldn't? Dad, gum it. Got that one. Oh, come here, buddy. I got him. He's a chunker too. He's a topwater fish, so that's what makes him great. Man, he just kind of slurped it. He didn't explode on it. A little one. This point here is a prime example, though, of what I'm looking for. I'm looking for really flat points, but they've got to have depth, you know, and it doesn't have to be like this one. This one's deep, but, you know, just depth. I don't want it, I don't want to be sitting in two, three foot of water being a long cast off of it. I need to be in like, five, six foot, seven foot at least. Uh, you know, this one I'm sitting, heck it's deep, deep right here. But I just want deep water close to some, a really flat gravel bank. You know this is a good point because there's a whole, whole bunch of gar on the other side feeding on shad too. Golly, that's a good one. That's a good one right there. Golly. The, I think it's a really good one. Come here, baby. Come here, come here, come here. Come, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Oh. Yes, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Big old head, there's not much body on him. How do I get a hold of that? Come here, come on. 
you are going nuts. I'm gonna just try to get Gotcha, gotcha. Nice one. You got him a mouth of that jaywalker right there. Couldn't take it just walking it back and forth. That's just the neat thing about that bait. It just catches, it catches big fish. I mean, it catches all size fish. It's just, just a great thing about this bait. I just, I love throwing walking baits. In particular, this one. I'm gonna catch another one. So in my opinion, you know, the end of summer, why do things get so tough? You know, you may ask, and, and I've always asked that, what happens? I think there's a couple reasons. One, there's more shad in the lakes than there ever are throughout the year, all sizes. Any, any, any meal they want, from a little bitty shad to a great big shad, they're everywhere in our lakes at the end of the summer just because they've had really, really good spawns. The thing that that creates, oh gosh, I better throw right there, is all these fish towards the end of the summer suspend. I mean, there's just tons of suspending fish. Um, I think a big part of that is because our, uh, I'm gonna have to do it again. I, I got a fish, I got a fish. I, I can't even think and talk, I have to do it again. So anyways, as I was saying, I can't walk and chew gum at the same time. I can't walk my bait and try to make a fishing point. Um, why is the fishing so tough in the end of the summer? I think there's a couple reasons. There's more shad than there's ever been in a lake. You know, there's all sizes. They're just readily available. You look in the water, you look on your screen, they're everywhere. Another thing, the thermoclines broke up. You know, the thermocline, you know, all the way through the middle of July, you've usually got a really hard thermocline uh, and that's the thermoclines when that water temperature changes from, from two degrees. If you've ever swim in a pond or in a muddy lake, you can always feel how the water's cold at your feet. That's the thermocline. That's where that temperature change is. And there's not a lot of oxygen below that. So when that thermocline breaks up, man, fish can be anywhere. Uh, the lakes start to turn over also. All those equations, there's more fish suspending than there ever are any other time of the year so what happens is you know we all relate to the bottom you know a crankbait a football jig a carolina rig a shaky head all those things relate to the bottom or we relate to the bank you know we fish the banks but now there's fish suspended just in that top five six seven eight foot of water depending on your water clarity anywhere in the lake thus making it another way to make it tough so how i combat that I fish really shallow towards the end of the summer. It just, it's, it's a thing that has worked for me all across the country. It, it doesn't matter where it is or where we go. When, the, when that water just, you know, your water's been at like, let's say here, it's been at 90 degrees and it just starts to turn back the other way. We've had a few cool nights. Um, that's when I think it starts to happen. That and the length of the days, the sunlight, you know, the days are starting to get shorter. You know, that we've had the longest day of the year, and now they're going the other direction. I think that's another triggering factor. But for me, one way that I combat it is fish super shallow. And those are some of the reasons why I think fishing gets tough towards the end of the summer. I'm gonna go back to fishing now. I can, I've made my point. I think I can focus and walk my bait. Gosh, dang it, that was a cool bite. I mean, that was a cool bite. Just when I think we've caught them all up here, I catch this gorilla right here. Come here, come here. Come on, come on, come on. That's a good one too. Oh my goodness. Guys, I have fun fishing and I always say like the last thing I do was really fun. You know, if you watch my flipping video or you watch a cranking video, I think this may be funner than all of them, catching them on a topwater. That's a big one. That is so much fun. Man, that fish, it was like a tuna bite. Just, he come up, boosh, and got it. It was awesome. I gotta get some pliers. That's a nice one. I was just about to leave. I thought I caught them all, but I didn't. All right, that's a great one. Good deal. Thanks, buddy. Yes. Look it, there's still more of them. <laughs> These fish are a little bit different from that last point. That's a Kentucky. Look at that. That's a big old Kentucky. 
we don't have very many of these in this lake. I mean, we do, but not a bunch of them. Thanks, buddy. You made my day. I like catching Kentuckys. Just a cool note on Kentuckys. You know, a lot of people ask, you know, what are Kentuckys? What, what, what's the difference on them? If you look right here, there's just a patch of teeth. If you rub your thumb right on that tongue, just like that, it's a patch of teeth. You can just, pretty cool. So the main bait today, you know, for me and, and, and generally a lot of times this time of year is, you know, a walking bait. I, I was using the Jaywalker. I like this one over others because it has three hooks. To me, that's just, man, having that extra hook on there really, you know, I feel like my catch rate's a lot better. Um, one thing I like to do is just tie a short monofilament leader. I've got 17 pound uh, XL Bass Pro line. Just tie a little knot right there. And uh, that deal right there, that was the main bait. It's just a, a great bait because these fish this time of year are feeding up for whatever reason, all the shatter on the surface. Um, that's the bait right there, just a, a bone jaywalker. You know, if you talk about colors, I'm gonna throw bone. I love that color, muddy water, clear water. It's just a great all around color. Uh, the only time that I'm gonna get away from a bait like this that rattles is I, I'm fishing super clear water, shallow. Uh, you know, really shallow, but it's really clear. I want a silent walking bait. Uh, the rest of the time, I love the bait with rattles in it and I love a bone colored one. So just got it paired on a, on a simple 6.8 medium action rod. I've got 30 pound braid on it. I write 30 right there on the reel, just so I know, eight three to one reel. That's the main setup for that. You know, but another bait that's gonna work in this situation is a wake bait. This is a wake bull right here. That bait's gonna work in the same situation. I'm also gonna always have this as a backup, just a swing head jig. I've got a big 10 inch power worm on there. Uh, that could be another bait to, to work. You know, a lot of people might be intimidated about using a walking style bait. Uh, but you know, once you figure it out, it's a great fish catcher. It's a bait that I have tied on year round. And I did a video here not long ago teaching Cade how to use one. Uh, go back to that video. I give you in depth of, of, of how to do it, the setup, all the critical things that'll help you become a better topwater walker. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go home. I'm gonna get on Google Earth. We talked about Google Earth in a, in a couple videos prior to this. I'm gonna show you stuff to look for, show you some of the stuff uh, that I would look for to go do this pattern. Uh, yeah, so let's go guys, let's go home. I'll show you what I'm doing. Hey guys, here we are. I'm back at the house. We had an awesome day fishing. It was just a, a ball of ball of fun. I was gonna try to show you just what I what I looked for, what how that went down today, you know, just to recap, when it's the end of summer, the biggest thing to take away from this, there's a lot of fish that go shallow. You know, it's I think that's one of those things that that, that I always struggled with. I, I always thought as the summer progressed, you got towards the end of summer, there's a lot of fish deep, and that's really not the case. After you can see today, we caught big ones and they were really, really shallow. So don't overlook that. You know, just an example of, of some points, you know, like this point right here. When I look at this thing on Google Earth, it's got deep water really close by. You can see there what that looks like. Um, just a flat point, it's got a couple bigger rocks right out here. That's a prime, prime example of something you wanna look at. Also the south wind, I think the, my best stuff a lot of times this time of year is that south wind pushes those shad up on those flat points. And that's why they're up there feeding so well. So think about your points when you're choosing them. Think about the spots you're fishing. You know, south wind's a predominant wind this time of year. Look for those ones that that, that, uh, that, that, that blows into. Uh, just to show you another spot, just to show, heck, I'll just show you where I caught them. I don't care. Here we go right here. I zoom in. That's the point. Man, that's where I caught all those fish this afternoon. You can just see how flat that thing is around it. You know, if I go forward in time just a little bit, um, you know, there's the water's about a foot higher, maybe right there. Right there, the water's kind of flooded. Uh, yeah, that's the point. I mean, it's got deep water on this side, pretty deep on this side. The south wind blows into it this way. That's the point where I caught them, right there. So, uh, man, I hope this helps you. 
you know, a lot of people get discouraged, including myself, trying to fish in the late summer. Get out there early, try some of those flat points, um, cover a lot of water quickly, guys. You know, that's a big thing too. Think about fish being suspended. Think about them being up in the water column, feeding up. Um, you know, that's why that walking bait could be so good. That's why, you know, that, 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 that wake bull, that, that, sub, that subsurface crankbait can be so good because those fish are feeding up a lot of times, really keying in on shad, and that's the way I think about it. So. so guys, man, I hope you enjoyed this video. It was a lot of fun today catching those fish. Um, I hope I'm helping you become a better fisherman because that is my goal with Project E, and uh, it's making me become a better fisherman because I'm fishing a lot more different conditions. You know, instead of coming home and uh, uh, working at the pecan farm every day, I'm going fishing a lot more. But, uh, um, you know, leave me a comment, hit that bell, hit that like button and uh, send me a picture on my social media to let me know I'm helping you guys because uh, I'm working hard on these and I hope you guys are enjoying them as much as I am. Thanks for following and uh, thanks for watching.